a mighty river divides this land. It marks the boundary between two rival families of lions. To the south lives the river pride, six lionesses and their cubs. They're a close-knit family and rely on each other for comfort and protection. Layla is the oldest and most experienced lioness. She has just one cub, six-month-old Mara. Layla's age is starting to show. A lifetime of hunting has taken its toll. The cubs are fed and raised by the lionesses, but they are protected by the pride's ruler. Fang. His broken tooth is a war wound from a recent battle and a mark of his bravery. He is the father of all of the cubs and their defender. Tomorrow, he's the best dad ever. Fang keeps Mara and her mother safe and guards their pride lands. Rich lands that every year host a great migration a million strong. Fang lets all other lions know that he alone rules the southern kingdom. The river is a great bringer of life to this wilderness, but it can also be a deadly foe. The surging rapids can carry even the strongest lion to his death. This is where dragons dwell. River Pride feeds on a dead hippo washed up on the river's bank. <laughs> Crocodiles don't fear the rulers of the land with one exception, Fang. Today, the pride's protector has earned his keep. A crocodile-infested river does have one benefit. It protects the pride from invasion from the north. The northern kingdom is ruled by Fang's greatest enemy, Kali. Kali 
is not alone. He has four sons in their prime. Together they form the most powerful force in this land, one set on conquest. Kali already rules the lionesses of the north, but he is not content with that. He and his sons are driven to expand their realm to the south. If he overthrows Fang, he will kill Mara and have new cubs of his own. Kali is little Mara's greatest danger. Massive herds still cross Fang's southern kingdom, so food is plentiful for the river pride. Layla may be old, but she is the most experienced hunter. She knows the best place to stage an ambush. hunt as a team. With Layla leading, they slowly begin to close the trap. Despite her aging body, Layla is determined to help the pride. is always dangerous. Layla and her sisters must eat quickly if they are to get the reward they deserve. A zebra's kick has injured her further. Staying fit is critical for a lioness. The pride cannot carry a female who is too weak to hunt.
something's wrong. Kali and his sons are on patrol. Sita's greatest enemy. A male is more than five times her size. As a single cheetah, she would flee, but with dependent cubs, she must hold her ground. She is totally focused on Kali. Incredibly, she's goading him. It seems insane, but it's a trick. She's drawing him away from her cubs. Kali tires. It worked. His son, however, is more determined. Sita is risking everything. Her speed has won the day, for now. Her terrified cubs are scattered and lost, in danger until they're back with their mother. Time is not on their side. The dark will cloak other predators. The season is changing and the pride lands are drying. The great herds are moving on in search of greener pastures. They may be gone for a year or more. With the herds gone, the river pride will struggle to find food. Layla is exhausted by her injuries. Mara tries to comfort her mother, but 
there's little she can do. With the herds moving on, the pride must follow. Layla cannot go on. She needs rest so her body can heal. Mara faces a terrible choice. Stay with her mother or follow the pride. Layla calls to the pride and to Mara, begging them to wait for her. But the pride must leave in search of food. They cannot jeopardize themselves and the other cubs. Pride moves further and further away. Layla forces herself to try and follow. Mara stays with Layla, but is in danger now. Mother and daughter have lost the protection of the pride. Layla must find the strength to catch up for the sake of her daughter. The lionesses are tired after their long journey, but cubs will be cubs and siesta time is soon over. Playmates are always welcome. Layla and Mara have braved the long journey and finally caught up. But their timing couldn't be worse. The river has fallen. The pride's protective moat has gone. Kali sees his chance to invade the southern kingdom. largest son cross the crocodile infested waters.
Fang senses the danger. Sounding strong might deter an attack. But Kali is not fooled. sees it's two against one, his chances are slim. Kali attacks. Fang has no answer. Kali's son threatens two. Fang deserts his pride, leaving them unprotected. poised for takeover. Mara may be killed. But a mother will do anything to save her cub. Layla is the lioness's leader. Despite her injury, she puts herself between the invaders and the precious cubs. Inspired by Layla, the other lionesses attack. have saved the pride and their precious cubs. Kali has lost this battle, but next time he may bring reinforcements. Fang has also been saved by the lionesses, but for how long? The attack has taken a terrible toll. This little cub is badly hurt and lucky to be alive, but Mara is nowhere to be found. Layla has taken another devastating blow in the fight. It takes all her strength just to get to her feet. She must find her Mara. With a mother's desperate hope, she calls for her cub. Mara has survived, 
Her mother's bravery has saved her. There is no greater bond than that between a lioness and her cub. For the River Pride, the cold rain has been a blessing in disguise. It allows them to appreciate the bond and protection of a larger family. One of Layla's sisters, Malaika, has small cubs of her own. With her injuries not healing, Layla is drawn closer to her sister's family. If Layla builds a bond with her sister, then Malaika might look after Mara as well as her own cubs. Layla's time is short. Strengthening the bond with her sister may be Mara's best chance to live. Layla may soon have to give up her cub. life will depend on getting closer to her cousins. It's happening. Mara is being adopted by Malaika and the Pride. There's nothing better for a lion than close companionship. With Mara safe, Layla can go. The time has come for Layla to leave the Pride forever. Layla struggles to find a quiet, safe place to be alone. The pride is now far away. Mara searches for any scent, any sign of her mother, but it's not there. All alone with their precious cub far away. Layla at last gives up the fight. Since the failed invasion, Kali has prowled the southern side of the river with his largest son. Now he calls on his other sons to join them. <laughs> Kali goes to greet his sons. They have been separated for some time.
family bonds between these ruthless fighters are very strong. But there is also fierce rivalry between them. They all want the crown. But Kali is their father and he lets them know that he is still king. Together, they are the most powerful force in the land. Together, they will make another assault on Fang and the River Pride. Fang's future as leader is hanging by a thread. As the months have passed, the cubs have grown into young adults. Within this close-knit family, Mara has thrived. She is now a teenager in lion years. The bonds of affection within the River Pride have never been stronger. Kali and his sons are coming with a vengeance. Fang's enemies lock in. They launch the attack. Fang's only hope is escape. He runs for his life. Fang will be shown no mercy if he stays. Kali's gang is victorious, and Fang is never seen again. Now the invaders attack the rest of the River Pride. sons rule. Their will is now law on both sides of the river. Kali's sons try to make peace with the lionesses. But in the battle, the youngsters were driven away. The pain of losing them is still too fresh. Pride's young males are in the greatest danger. Callie's gang view them as a threat and hunt them down. Mm -hmm. 
Mara also fled in the battle, but as a lioness, is in less danger. For the first time in her life, she is alone. She has lost everything. Kali's gang drive out Mara's young male cousins, banishing them from the Pride Lands forever. And there is only one escape route across the river. The river has swollen, but the young males have no choice but to cross. And now the crocodiles have the advantage. The youngsters know what lurks just beneath, but they fear Kali more than they fear crocodiles. escaped, but just by the skin of a crocodile's teeth. With her family blown to the wind, Mara has found living alone a challenge. With no pride to hunt with her, she's going hungry. Warthogs seem to be the perfect meal, small, tasty, and easy to catch. Not quite so easy after all. The herds are still gone, and all the other alternatives seem to be supersized. But young lions think they're a match for anything. If only Mara had taken Cetus class in avoiding grumpy buffalo. cost of losing her family is painfully clear. Mara was driven out before she learned to hunt. The River Pride lionesses once again proclaim their ownership of the Pride Lands. They have made peace with Kali. Their new ruler has become a committed protector. Mara is still an outcast. With food scarce, 
The lionesses don't want Mara taking a share. She must fend for herself. It seems harsh, but the other lionesses have new priorities. Cubs. Kali's cubs. <laughs> Kali has achieved his goal. The lionesses are now raising his cubs, not fangs. <laughs> Sita and her family confidently stride across Kali's land. The young cheetahs now have the confidence to challenge everything in their path. Even lions. Wait, the young cheetahs have yet to learn that lions live in prides. The hunters are being hunted. This lesson is not hunting lions. It's escaping them. over. The most important lesson, never mess with lions. The sight that Mara and all the lions have been longing for. At last, the great herds are returning to the Pride Lands. For the lions, the good times are back. With the Pride Lands rich again, it's also a chance for Mara to end her hunger. one last goal, to be accepted back into the river pride. Mara is desperate to rejoin her mother's pride into which she was born, 
but will Malaika and the lionesses welcome her back? have finally accepted Mara back into their family. Layla's brave fight for her cub to live on was not in vain.